So I've had this idea of this project in my mind for a while, and this weekend I decided to see if I could make it all work. And that is to build a retro gaming PC using an Xbox Series S and with old retro parts such as an old keyboard and an old mouse that use PS2 connectors. And to round out the package, of course, we had to use an old VGA monitor from back in the day. Without further ado, here it is. This is a Windows 98 build running on my Xbox Series S, complete with VGA display and keyboard to replicate my gaming setup of the 90s. And for the most part, this works really well. Games from the past that I love playing, like original Unreal, Half-Life, Interstate 76, Virtua Cop, and even more games like Phantasmagoria, the list goes on. This is peak PC gaming and I absolutely love it. Now, of course, some concessions had to be made here for this to work, but this setup is a fun little project for anyone who wants to do more than just play games on their Xbox and for those who love DOS and Windows games of the 90s. Now this particular setup is running Windows 98 Second Edition as you can see and it also supports DirectX, Direct3D, OpenGL and the 3D FX API known as Glide. But to be clear, this is running emulation and the emulator that we are running is known as DOSBox Pure which is a fork of the popular DOSBox emulator. And we use DOSBox Pure because of the particular enhancements that make it well suited for the Xbox Series S. DOSBox Pure offers a very simplified way to install an operating system in any games you want on top of it. Now, because it's PC related, there are hoops to jump through, but the reward is this, a very capable Windows 98 setup that runs many games that I throw at it. So how does one run Windows 98 on an Xbox Series S? Well, if you are new to the channel or simply are not in the know, the Xbox line of consoles, which includes the Xbox One, One X, Series S and Series X, have a method to run community developed applications known as UWP apps. UWP is known as the Universal Windows Platform and these are common applications that are compatible across all of Microsoft's Windows devices including computers, tablets, smartphones and of course the Xbox. One of these UWP apps that has been developed is known as RetroArch which is a popular front end that runs many emulation cores. With either access to developer mode or retail mode it's possible to install these UWP apps on your Xbox and with the Series S and X there is a lot of potential for good performance thanks to the RDNA2 architecture. Now, as a quick side note, one of the questions I get asked all the time is, will Microsoft ban or block my account or ban my console if I run emulators on my Xbox Series S? The answer, in my opinion, is no. And that is because Microsoft has provided a method to install UWP apps since around 2016, and the practice is unlikely to change at least in this generation. Of course, whatever comes next potentially could do away with UWP apps, but as far as the Xbox One and the Xbox Series line of consoles go, UWP apps is perfectly legal and perfectly safe to install on your system when you run under developer mode. So let's talk about setting all this up. What I did was install RetroArch UWP, and then from here, I installed the DOSBox Pure Core. Now it's a matter of setting out Windows 98. So what you need to do is provide a legal Windows 98 ISO image and then you run DOSBox Pure and simply mount and install the operating system. Now at this point I should tell you about connecting up a mouse and keyboard for this particular setup. Initially my plan was to use an old retro gaming mouse and keyboard that used PS2 connectors. Unfortunately however, mouse support currently doesn't work in DOSBox Pure. Now I'm not really sure if this is a retro arch issue or a specific DOSBox Pure issue, but I do know that mouse does work on the Xbox Series S and X. In fact, there are many games that actually support mouse and keyboard out of the box, including games such as Call of Duty Warzone and the Quake Remaster from 2021. And in fact, if you plug in any generic USB mouse, you can see that I can move this cursor around the screen just fine. But unfortunately, it does not work in DOSBox Pure. However, there is a workaround that you can supply, and that is to simply map a virtual mouse to either the left analog or right analog stick of the controller. It's not perfect, it's not ideal, but it does get the job done. Now, as far as providing a USB keyboard, that seems to work just fine. However, once again, I tried to use my old retro Windows 98 gaming keyboard, and with a PS2 to USB mouse connector, 
Unfortunately, this keyboard was not detected, so I had to resort to a more modern USB keyboard. If anyone has a good understanding or line on perhaps getting a retro keyboard to work with some type of adapter, I'd be very interested in learning more about it because I feel like really to complete this build, I would much prefer to use an old style keyboard. Now, if you don't actually have a keyboard to use with a build like this, you can get away with using a virtual keyboard simply by pressing the left thumbstick and that will bring up a virtual keyboard that you can use. I certainly don't recommend doing this because obviously it's very slow and tedious, but it does get the job done. But hey, you can pick up a USB keyboard pretty cheap these days. So go ahead and just grab one and connect it up to your Xbox and run it that way. So with my mouse and keyboard issues all sorted out, I ended up installing a 64 gigabyte partition that runs internally on the Xbox Series S SSD. Now, once Windows 98 is installed, you can simply install the 3DFX Voodoo 1 drivers. Now, Voodoo 2 and 3 are not supported at this time, only Voodoo 1, but you can still emulate a 12 megabyte Voodoo 1 graphics card, and the acceleration in general is pretty good. Now, once you have your Windows 98 and your 3D effects installation, now it's time to install games. And from here, it pretty much works the same way. Simply provide a ISO image of a game that you want to install or a disk image. And now you can tell DOSBox Pure to simply provide it for installation on top of the operating system that you installed previously. In this instance, Windows 98. So what this means is when you load into Windows 98, you'll notice that the e-partition contains a mounted ISO image of the game that we tried to install, in this case, MDK by Shiny Entertainment. And from here, you can simply double click on the e-partition and that will make the ISO image available for you to install on either your C or D partition. Now, I configured a 64 gigabyte C partition when I installed Windows 98 previously. So I'm going to install the game into C. And that's pretty much it. You would just run the game like you normally would running under Windows. And as far as performance go, you can see here that it's quite good. In fact, if we take a look at this benchmark program, you can see that our build here is running a lot better than a traditional 1998 system from back in the day. Now, of course, these types of synthetic benchmarks are a little all over the place, especially when we're running a benchmark running under emulation anyway. So obviously the results here are quite skewed, but you can't deny the power of the CPU that we have here and being able to run Windows 98 games on top of Windows 98 on top of emulation is quite remarkable. Now, when it comes to resolutions, I personally recommend that you stick with the 640 by 480 at 16 or 32 bit desktop. You can run at 800 by 600 or even 1024 by 768, but I do notice that the operating system and the games do slow down. So for me, I think that the sweet spot is definitely 640 by 480. And that's what I'm running this particular desktop in at the moment. But the final piece to really round out this build, and I think the thing that really makes it stand out above anything else is the VGA display. We're running an old school gateway VX700 monitor here. And this is one of my old monitors from back in the day. Now, in order to connect up an old display to an Xbox Series S or X, you'll need some type of adapter. And I'm using a HDMI to a VGA adapter. Now, your mileage will certainly vary here because I've tried different ones and some of them just don't work. But this one here does work. However, this particular one that I'm using has no way for you to route the audio from HDMI to a line out to plug into a mixer or to a pair of speakers. And that is a limitation of this particular one. But I've also seen other alternatives where you can take the audio from HDMI and route it elsewhere. But once you connect up your old school CRT to your Xbox Series S, with any luck, it should display. Now, this is only step one of a fairly tedious process because as we can see, we're running a four by three aspect ratio display. And the Xbox, of course, is expecting some type of widescreen signal such as 720p or 1080p. But in order for this to work correctly, what you simply want to do is go into your retro arch configuration settings and adjust the screen scaling to be integer scaled and four by three aspect ratio. And you can also change the full screen resolution settings to match the desktop that we selected for our Windows 98 build. In this instance, it's 640 by 480. So if I change the parameters 
from 720p here to 640 by 480, I can get a pretty good display on my Windows desktop. Now, for those people that know about DOS and PC gaming, you'll know that this is not a great solution because any game that wants to change its resolution or its screen mode to something else will simply mean that these adjustments won't look good on anything else other than 640 by 480. And this is why I'm running all my games at that mode, just to make sure that the screen display does not change. But you can see here, even if we go into our DOS screen, the fonts themselves just don't look good. And this is definitely something that cannot be easily fixed with running an emulator like. But if you stay within the confines of running Windows 98 at 640 by 480 and make sure that all your games are running at that screen mode, then everything will just look good. And this should be good enough for most people. And the end result is a really nice looking Windows 98 retro gaming PC. And I gotta say, this is a really neat project. Overall, performance of the games is actually quite good. You can see some of the games here that are running quite well. Now, of course, when we're talking about running 3D acceleration, that's another level of API on top of Windows 98, on top of emulation. So when it comes to running 3D effects games, although you'll have a pretty good experience, it's probably not going to be as good as running native software rendering, which is what I recommend you do anyway. In fact, in my opinion, I think native software rendering looks better on a CRT display like this. But of course, this choice is up to you. So there you have it. That is my Windows 98 PC retro gaming build running on my Xbox Series S for $299. Now, if you have the spare parts lying around, this is a really fun project to look into and doing yourself, especially if you're a fan of DOS and Windows gaming from back in the day. Now, obviously this build could be better improved and I've already got some ideas about where I could improve. I think I could pick up a retro gaming keyboard that looks like a old school retro gaming keyboard, but has USB connections. But unfortunately, there's never any guarantee that this keyboard will actually work. However, this is kind of the look that I'm trying to go for. But the big thing obviously is mouse support. Once we finally get mouse support added to the UWP version of DOSBox Pure, then we can finally round out this build and make it look authentic like a old retro gaming PC build from like 1997, 1998 era. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What did you think about this? I'm very much interested to hear what you guys have to say. Where could I improve? What things that could be done better? Obviously, there's a lot of configuration in DOSBox and perhaps the way that I set this up may not be the right way to do things. But let me know what you guys thought about in the comments below. We're going to leave it here. As always, guys, if you like this episode, please don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.